Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, my name is Arden and in today's video I'm doing a reading and writing vlog. This month I have a goal of writing at least 20,000 words for one of my oldest books. If you are an OG Wattpad reader, you would know it. It's called Last Cloudless Night. I used to write this book as my passion project. It was everything. I wrote 70,000 words for that book and I still hadn't reached the middle. And I don't wanna give away too much because you can read it on Inkit because I'm gonna be posting it on Inkit. Now, since leaving the last vlog, I did not pick this book up at all. It is Sunday, so I finished the vlog yesterday. I already edited it. So Empire of Storms is the book that I'm going to be reading this week. And no, this is not wine, this is actually tea. It's snowing outside, it's cold. We love the wintry aesthetic, but we don't love the wintry temperatures. Just to give you a quick recap, at first I decided to start reading right where I left off. Then I changed my mind and started reading from the beginning because I felt like I was cheating. But now that I've started from the beginning, I find it kind of boring because I already know all of this. So what I'm going to be doing, hopefully, is skimming through the important parts to get to where I was. Because I do remember all of this and it's not really boring, but I don't like story beginnings. And in order for me to finish this book by the end of the year, I really do need to make some compromises to what makes my reading experience most enjoyable. Rereading is normally something that I don't enjoy unless a significant amount of time passes or I am really in love with the story. Hi lovelies, welcome, good morning, it's Monday. Yesterday I read up to chapter 14, which is page 134, and today I have to read up to page 262. This is how much I have a goal of reading. Let's talk about what I did yesterday, because I think that might interest you a little bit more. I went on my Kindle and I decided that I need to, you know, get through some of my books on Kindle, because my Kindle library is so full. I'm the type of person who would always go on Kindle store and just haul a bunch of free Kindle books. And I do that all the time, like hundreds of free Kindle books. To the point where I, I'm, I'm not reading any, but I'm buying all of them. As I was waiting for my computer to update, I decided to get through a few of them that I've already started in the past, and they're all non-fiction. Last year I decided I'm not going to be rating non-fiction, just so you know. Here are the books that I've been reading. NDE, Life After Death, <laughs> the top 10 fascinating facts about near-death experiences by Wayne Purden. This was a short book talking about how near-death experiences affect your life. This book also goes into a few instances of near-death experiences. Next we have House of John Proctor, Witchcraft Martyr 1692 by William P. Upham. I rated this one star. I know I said I'm not gonna rate non-fiction books, however I really really hated this one. I don't even know why I hauled it, why I got it. John Proctor, if you don't know, was related to the Salem Witch Trials and I thought this was gonna be something about it, like Salem Witch Trials. We're gonna know something. However, you know what this book was about? finding out the location of the house of John Proctor and what his lands were. But I don't know how to picture where his lands and what, what his estate was if I haven't visited it before. I don't know what street is what street. So why did I even finish this book? Why did I even read it? Because I didn't want to DNF it and it was a short read. So I rated it one star. It was very unenjoyable. Except if you live there and you know the streets and want to go John Proctor house hunting. Next up we have DIY Lucid Dreaming Life by Jenny Funkmeyer. This book talks about how your life can affect your dream life and vice versa and gives you tips on how to lucid dream and how to face your fears in your lucid dream and in your real life. Not really that interesting, expected a little bit more from it. And the last book that I've read is Law of Attraction Secrets to Unleashing the Power from Within by Daniel DePolonio. This book covers the basics of Law of Attraction. I consider myself quite knowledgeable when it comes to Law of Attraction and, and this book just didn't do it for me. I wouldn't buy this book, but I would haul it for free. So I think this book is still for free on Kindle. So if you wanna know about the Law of Attraction, go read it if you want to, but um, it was cute, not really that memorable and not really um, groundbreaking when it comes to Law of Attraction, but by far it was the best book that I read out of those four. And that concludes the four books that I read in one evening. Counting it to my Goodreads challenge, that brings me to eight books read in January. During the end of last year, I did say in a video that I want 
quality over quantity and I still stand by that. I genuinely thought that these books were gonna be a lot better. I just don't know what happened. Maybe it's because they're free Kindle books, but then again, I don't wanna be elitist, I guess, and I don't wanna discriminate against free books because they can be good, you know? They can be good, like dating games. That book was good. But I'm glad that I am finally starting to read books on my Kindle because my Kindle is cobwebs. My Kindle is spiders and dust and new books that have never been opened before. I'm so worried about going through my physical TBR that I always forget about my Kindle library. I haven't done any reading today because I've been doing some other stuff. I am so stressed out. Like I said, I haven't been reading, but I'm gonna be reading today and try to get through as much of this book as I can because I just want to be done with it. I've not tried hiding my dread when I, whenever I pick this book up and my hesitation. And it's not that this book is bad, that's the thing. I wish it were bad so that I would have something to use as an excuse, oh, this is why I'm not reading this book. I think it's intimidation. To some degree, it's intimidation. To another degree, it's me not being in a fantasy mood. Anyway, gotta read so that I can finish the rest two books and so that I can just read what I want to read for this month. You know how, how I've been procrastinating and not wanting to pick up the books that I already own. This year I have to, so. It's Wednesday, the 13th of January. You can really tell that I wasn't planning on filming this because look how I'm dressed, come on. I am wearing two jackets because I'm so cold. You all knew this was coming, you knew. Because when I hesitate for more than, what, two weeks to read a book, I'm, I'm, I'm just taking a break. Empire of Storms and I, we're taking a break, respectfully. I've been avoiding reading this book and it's been putting me in a reading slump. So I've decided to come to terms with the fact that I'm not in the mood to read this. I don't want to read this right now. It's not the right time. So I'm putting it down for now, respectfully. No beef between us. I'll still return to it sometime this year. I have to finish it by the end of the year. And I'm putting it in a special pile of books that I put down. And now I'm just gonna continue reading something else. We have sci-fi, paranormal, dyst romance, dystopia recommended by a friend. And we have realistic fiction, French literature, blah blah. This is a book that I wanted to unhaul, but I decided that I'm gonna read before I, I unhaul it. So this is gonna be the next book that I'm reading because I want to give it to my friend. Let's just, let's just get this out. It is Knowing Me by Delphine de Vigan. So this is what we're reading. Like I said, this is a book that I wanted to read before I unhauled it. And it's very short, 244 pages. I binge watched Avatar The Last Airbender. I, w I finished watching that. Then I finished watching season two of A Discovery of Witches. Which, by the way, I just want to read it now. I really want to reread The Discovery of Witches. I finished the first book and the second one, and I'm on the third one, which is called The Book of Life. But I want to read the first one again. These are some of my favorite books. They're just my feel-good comfort books as much as A Court of Mist and Fury is. So when I'm done with my TBR for this month, I hope to kind of read A Discovery of Witches again, but we'll see how, how my moods go. I guess you're updated now. Thursday. 3 p.m. I've got a Zoom meeting later on today. I'm reading No and Me right now. I'm on page 26. I am planning on finishing it by the end of the week because this week hasn't been that productive. And after I'm done with that, the only book that I have left for my wrap TBR is this one, which is also for another video. I got Revenge of the Sluts by Natalie Walton. This is a Wattpad book, which I'm also adding to my january tbr so technically these are the two books that i have to read by the end of the month considering i'm going through a little bit of a reading sump this is not really the best timing however i'm gonna push through i can do it now as for this book let's just talk about it a little bit this is about our main character lou who has an iq of 160 and a friend called lucas in school then lou meets no and no i think is older she is homeless and as a school assignment, Lou has to interview a homeless person and she befriends No. And somehow, judging by the summary, No will come home with her 
and a lot of things will happen with her family because there is a past that we got a hint of at the beginning of the book I think Lou had a sibling and her family probably had to face the death of that sibling I'm not sure I'm not that far into it yet judging by the reviews a lot of people are assuming that Lou the main character is autistic or is on the autism spectrum. One of the reviewers or one of the readers asked the author if that is true and the author just said that uh, actually Lou is not autistic, she is only shy and precautious. But the way this book reads, the writing style, it does feel very peculiar and it does feel a little bit different. Uh, maybe because she has an IQ of 160 and Lou is really smart and she sees the world in a different way. I wouldn't say I particularly like the writing style, but I think this might be a translated version because it was originally published in France in 2007, so the translations are a little bit off. This is how it normally feels when you try to translate English books in Slovenian. It's just the translations are a little bit off or maybe it's the writing style. I just don't like the way this book is written and that is my personal opinion. Usually contemporary books, they can either be very hard hitting for me or I can just pass them by or they can be really like light-hearted fun reads. So I'm interested in seeing what kind of an effect this will have. But like I said, this book is one that I am unhauling. I will not be keeping it. I already have a friend who will take it. Just my thoughts right now. Page 41, I have about 204 pages to go. Um, this book is really... Ow. it's fast paced. I was right about the main character being from France. I was right about um, the main character's family going through a loss. Lou and her family lost her sister Chloe. It is not explained how but um, it just goes through how her family is dealing with it. How her mom basically fell apart after losing her daughter and how hard they were trying to have a baby but you know it wasn't until Chloe came that was like a miracle um, and they were almost gave up but then Chloe came and now you know she's gone and that really hit her mother and her family is really struggling um, and yeah so I'm interested in seeing how No is gonna help his family how her arrival is gonna help them deal with the loss because I think that's what this book is about just dealing with a loss and going through the pain it's Friday, I have about 98 pages left to read this book and I just want to discuss with you my current thoughts. At the beginning I thought the writing style is going to get in the way of my enjoyment of the book but the more we get into the book, the more appropriate it seems. It's, it's written in a way that really touches your soul. It's hard to read sometimes because this book is full of life stories. It is full of hardships, it is full of despair, it is a bit depressing, it deals with so many things, homelessness, broken families, parents who abandon their children, it, it deals with sexual assault, it deals with just everyday life things such as shelters and women shelters and food and starvation and depression and it's so much, this book is so much. I wish I had more words but that's as much as I can describe it. I'm finishing it today um, and I will let you know what my rating is but right now I can't even begin to think about rating. I don't know what I want to rate it. This book is depressing and sad and tragic and I don't want it. I don't want this book anymore. I think they teach in class about those stories that have the main character or one of the characters that is just destined for a downfall. That you want the best for and you're hoping that they'll get their shit together but they just end up following their tragic story they, they end up with a really sad ending i guess no and me is depressing it is just depressing i i'm done i'm done i i can't i need to move on it's sad um it's a really good book but it's really sad for me i i don't want to read it anymore thankfully i finished it but um Anyway, rating it three stars because it's just so sad and I would highly recommend it for anyone to read it if you are interested in just a book that deals with like life situations. I'm gonna go. It's time to go for a walk. Aya is ready. I am ready. We're going to Ljubljana Castle and we need to both get out of the house for a while. Yay! Hi beautiful. 
You're, you're beautiful, you know? Yeah. Purple suits you. By the way, purple is my favorite color. Uh, we're just waiting for my best friend to call me that she's here and then we're leaving for a walk. Okay, we didn't go to Ljubljana Castle, but we did walk around Ljubljana for a bit. Look at that bitch. <laughs> That's my best friend. Love her coat. That's, a, that's an amazing coat. I love it. Look, that is my old school, everybody. My old high school. I used to go there. Yay. <laughs> Poor little oh. lady. Uh. Lebo. Lebo, yeah. Baby. 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 No. <laughs> no. Due to low temperatures in Ljubljana, my best friend and I ended up not going to Ljubljana Castle, but we did have a nice little walk around Ljubljana with my dog. So technically, we're, we were just getting some exercise. It's fine. Um, my dog really loved it. She is sleeping right now. I'm waiting for her to come home because we are having a little study session. We both do online school. She is in college. I am still in high school. Um, but we both have to do our own thing. I figured why not do our own thing together. She has an exam in three days and she has been dreading studying. She likes to procrastinate and that's how you get a buddy to hold you accountable. Yay. But also I've been procrastinating with my own school as well. So um, I need her to hold me accountable as well. Since tomorrow is the last day of this reading log, I'm just going to go through all of the books that I've read this week. Four ebooks and one physical book. I finished one book from my wrap TBR and I DNF'd or put down temporarily one of the books from my wrap TBR. Looking back at it now, a lot of this week, if not most of this week, was spent procrastinating because I didn't want to read Empire of Storms. I've read 135 pages of this book before deciding to call it quits. Then I moved on to uh, Life After Death and These by Wayne Purden. Then I moved on to House of John Proctor, Witchcraft Martyr 1692 by William P. Upham, which I rated one star. Okay, next book I read is DIY Lucid Dreaming Life by Jenny Funkmeyer. And the last book is Law of Attraction, Secrets to Unleashing the Power from Within, Free Bonus Inside, Money, Happiness, Love, Success, Achieve Dreams, vis Visualization Techniques, book one by Daniel DePolonio. And now today I finished Know and Me by Delphine de Vigan, which is 249 pages. So if we take a look at 135 pages that I read of Empire of Storms, and then moving on, um, Life After Death, which has 38 pages, plus DIY Lucid Dreaming, which I'm just guessing has 40 pages, I guess. And then House of John Proctor has 28 pages. And then Law of Attraction has 26 pages. And No and Me has 246. In total, I read 513 pages, which can technically be one book. Um, so I'm not really feeling that bad about it. It's, you know, it's it's okay. It's a productive week. I wasn't reading most of the week, but at least I managed to read something. This is how I comfort myself for reading short books. Not that short books are, you know, I just feel like it's cheating. I read some amazing books. Starcrossed right now is my favorite of all the books that I've read this month. I'd say that that's quite productive. Why am I constantly giving you? It's because I'm insecure about my reading for this week. <laughs> I am left with two book options that I'm going to be reading. Revenge of the Sluts by Natalie Walton and the last one, which is this one that my friend recommended. And this is one that I'm going to be filming for another video as well. But in this video, we get to unwrap this book and you'll figure out what is the book that Olivia wanted me to read. Now, when I say recommended by a friend, I don't always mean that it was recommended that this person read the book, but I mean that this person chose the book for me. So what we have here is a sci-fi paranormal romance, dystopian, recommended by a friend, book one out of nine, technically, that doesn't have to be book one out of nine. Um, I could have just counted novellas in here. Olivia chose this for me. And I am so excited because the book that she chose is Gone by Michael Grant. And if she hadn't chosen this book for me, I don't know when I would have picked it up. 
I do have to say that I once, I think it was in 2013, started reading this book. I was on the train to Budapest with school and my classmates and I got a couple of chapters in. I thought it was really interesting. I never finished it because in Budapest I didn't have the time and then when I came home I kind of forgot about it. So this would give me a nice little opportunity to start reading it again. Now let me just read what it's about. 299 hours 54 minutes. Suddenly it's a world without adults and normal has crashed and burned. When life as you know it ends at 15 everything changes. A small town in Southern California, in the blink of an eye, everyone over the age of 15 disappears. Cut off from the outside world, those that are left are trapped and there's no help on the way. Chaos rules the streets. Now a new world order is rising and even scarier, some survivors have power. Mutant power that no one has ever seen before. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six books, I think. This is one book that I'm reading. The second one is you know, Revenge of the Sluts. As a lead reporter for the Warrior Weekly, Eden has covered her fair share of stories at St. Joseph's High School. And when intimate pictures of seven female students are anonymously emailed to the entire school, Eden is determined to get to the bottom of it. In tracking down leads, Eden is shocked to discover not everyone agrees the students are victims. Some people feel the girls brought it on themselves. Even worse, the school's administration seems more concerned about protecting its reputation than its students. With the anonymous sender threatening more emails, Eden finds an unlikely ally, the seven young women themselves. Banding together to find the perpetrator, the tables are about to be turned. The Slut Squad is fighting back. I am going to be posting a full video of this book on February 2nd, but you will see me talk about this book in my future weekly reading vlogs. As for now, we're gonna dive into Gone. Okay, first impressions are that the font is really big. It's gonna be really fast to read. 570 pages in total. That, that's a good amount of, yeah, it's a thick book to be honest, but it's a big font as well. So we can do this. We can do this and we can also do this. I'm filming for my vlog so that people see that we are studying together. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Boga. Hello, Pozmahe. Hello. Yay. Study date. Hello. <laughs> So as my best friend studies, I have finished the taking down all the notes for my environmental science class for the last module that I have and all that is left is for me to write an essay, um, take the quiz for the last module, then study everything, like all the modules that I've, you know, had so far, and final exam, that's all I need to finish this class. And now I am working on the other essay, and I have four options. I could choose, one is pollution, the second one is global warming, third one is our population, and fourth one is endangered species. I'm gonna choose global warming because <laughs> in the description it says research and discuss what the major consequences of global warming are. There are many countries where the damage, where the change of climate has already affected animal populations and the diminishing of natural resources. Still, the topic of global warming is controversial. Some people do not believe that global warming is caused by humans. Research and identify both sides of the argument and provide your own conclusions. Funny, because here I'm going to have to be the devil's advocate. And usually I'm really bad at arguments and really bad at arguing my points. But the reason why I chose global warming is because I want to challenge myself. And I know, okay, it's cool. Like, 
do you really want to challenge yourself when it comes to your grade but yes yes i do because being the devil's advocate um is not that it's fun but i'm currently writing a book called last class night that deals with global warming and deals with conspiracy theories so you know it just it, it's the right thing to do i want to do it and that's gonna be my topic anyway um yeah i'm gonna continue my best friend is currently waiting for me and i'm on mute so yeah um bye <laughs> it's saturday it's late and i am slowly ending this week's reading vlog in next week's reading vlog you will probably see me read gone and revenge of the sluts hopefully finishing both because then i want to continue with a discovery of witches season two came out i binged watched the entire thing and now i want to reread the first book the second book and finally finish with the third book for february i definitely don't want to have such a tight schedule of the books that i want to read i want to be a little bit more free-flowing i've already made a list of books that i want to read in february a few days ago i made a video and posted it on tiktok where i asked you guys to comment down a number between 1 and 61 and that is gonna be the number of a book that is wrapped that i'm gonna be reading in february so that number was 25 i don't know what book it is um we'll see and then another book that i'm probably gonna add to the list is a book that you guys will be voting for on instagram the voting still has to take place but i will be using the random number generator to come up with four books i will take a picture of the descriptions of the books and you will be choosing the book that you guys want me to read all i have to do for this month's wrap tbr is gone and for february i have i will have two books on my wrap tbr which is the tiktok book and the instagram book this month my most popular genre i would say is uh, non-fiction just because i've read most non-fiction books and those are four however if we look by page numbers i would say um fiction in general yeah just fiction see you next week i'm taking tomorrow off to edit the video thank you guys so much for watching please leave a like comment subscribe let me know if you like these weekly reading vlogs or if you just want me to focus on one book per video i'm not really sure how i feel about that right now but yeah um i'm just experimenting with my with my vlogs to be honest thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye